Hey guys, welcome to yet another interesting video based on data mining. So today in this video we will be seeing one of the clustering technique that is we have the birch. So the title looks very big so it's uh, nothing but balanced iterative reducing and clustering using hierarchies. So we start the bifurcation from the name so it's basically used as a clustering technique. So it basically reduces the clusters and it does so in an iterative manner and it is in a balanced way and it does use by some kind of hierarchies and so we will be seeing algorithm before that we will have an understanding or an overview of what Birch actually is in data mining and why it is used for clustering. So I have laid two important points like the shape of clusters that would be determined by using Birch is it uh, is used for scalable shape of clusters so like uh, clusters having like very big scale in or scale out so for that kind of natural clusters this is basically used and the input parameters which would be specified is n d dimensional data points that you would be requiring n is the number any integer numbers from 0 to infinite and d is two dimensional or three dimensional any kind of dimension data points to consider in that particular cluster now uh, it plays a very significant role in the scalability of a very very large data set like for example if you have a very large data set of uh, having 50,000 or 1 lakh of data so for that to cluster and to minimize it or to condense it we mainly use the Birch technique and so this technique is suggested where your data or the input data uh, which you have is taken as an average and not the entire raw data so first the raw data is divided into average or taken their mean and then it is put for sampling purpose uh, then uh, this Birch technique is designed based on two prime features such as the very first is clustering feature that is CF and so it is represented by means of a triplet that is you have N, LS and SS. N stands for the number of items in the subcluster then S is, uh, LS is the linear sum that is its summation I runs from 1 to N XI and SS is the square sum of all those data points. So it's like a summation i is from 1 to n xi square. Now then another feature is you have a CF tree that is clustering feature tree which is a balanced height tree that stores the clustering feature for hierarchical clustering. It's like that in the memory it's already built so whenever you load some kind of data points or when you, whenever you load some kind of data it uh, automatically creates uh, or it automatically represents that uh, clustering feature tree. And so uh, all the internal nodes of this uh, particular kind of clusters are stored as the sum of their descendants. Descendants is basically their child nodes. So well that uh, was the overview. So let's move on to the algorithm of how you can uh, iteratively and uh, in a reducing manner you can store those uh, clusters. So the very first step is it loads the data into the memory. So whenever you have the uh, kind of data or whenever you have the raw data in very first scan the CF tree is built into the memory with all the data points. So it's like all the noise and all the out layers in the very first step you have. Then what you have you have sub phases. So in sub phases the very first phase is fast. So it's a kind of processing technique on subclusters and not on the data points. So uh, what it does the initial cluster it just breaks into n number of small small subclusters and on that subclusters it performs those kind of processing and not the entire uh, data set or the very large cluster. Then you have the accurate phase. So in this just the out layers which are marked or on the point inside the pound outside the boundary are all just separated and not removed just you have to separate or mark on that particular lines. Then you have less order sensitive so in this what happens is initial ordering of the data are done by the CF tree like uh, all those data points uh, it may be in a random fashion so what you do you just increase it or in an ascending fashion or in some kind of uh, round robin fashion you just arrange those data points. Then you have the second step that is condense of the data condense means to uh, just shrink the data size so it's like for data resizing for optimization for step 3 that is for global clustering then more outliers which are separated or identified from step 1 are removed from this that is in condensing technique condensing is either optional or the clouded subclusters which are there in that particular step are just grouped together so that they can be further used for processing well that was simple next we move on to step 3 which was mentioned in this for optimization so in this what you do you mainly use some kind of 
clustering algorithm like you have hierarchical clustering you have k means clustering you have clarence and so uh, with the help of that what you do you do global clustering and so why it is done it is done for solving the problem of node spanning and is fixed by natural clusters like uh, if you take for example some kind of natural clusters what they have is they have the problem of node spanning across the entire cluster so it's like if you try to fit in a particular memory map then it won't fit so uh, for uh, reducing that you use the global clustering then you have the cluster refining once the outliers are removed then too you have to refine it to some particular extent so for that it uh, have some extra passes for rearrangement and reassignment of the centroid and refining is optional in this if you do the uh, extra pass kind of activity and then it converges to minimum and also any more outliers which are identified and removed from this and so uh, it poses certain kind of limitations like uh, one particular limitation is cf tree which it has that is the clustering feature so it holds only a limited number or a finite number of data points and so it is uh, due to its size restriction which burge impo burge imposes and so it's not considered or not recommended as a ideal representation technique for being a natural cluster to user like user cannot use or user cannot view as a kind of natural cluster or he cannot see burge as a natural kind of cluster due to its limited number or capability to hold that many data points or data entries so well that was all about the introduction and algorithm regarding the burge technique in clustering for data mining so hope you guys enjoyed this video from you got educated by watching this video please do like share comment and most importantly don't forget to subscribe to my channel thank you very much